Yo, it's your one bar rhyme, bringing you another one bar commentary for one bar modern war, one bar, one bar, one bar, one bar! Sorry, inside joke. Anyway, this is Ryan of Snows, Mr. Marty MCD, and I'm bringing you a commentary for uh, Modern Warfare 3, as you can see here. And this is, um, so, anyway, I'm just getting into this. It's been over 24 hours since this uh, game has come out, and I thought this would be a good time for me to give my expanded thoughts and feelings on the multiplayer of Modern Warfare 3. Um, this gameplay you see right here is a demolition game. That's on Arkaden, I think that's right, um, which is one of my favourite maps in the game. And was recording on the first day of release, and I think it's one of those... It was one of those games I really enjoyed, and I felt I defended and armed the bombs rather well. But anyway, I won. Since I've been playing this for about a couple of hours now, I think it's like I'm clo I've clocked in like five or six hours so or so. I think I can give some firm impressions with this game, and I'm going to start off with the guns. So I played with pretty much all the guns I've unlocked: the assault rifles, the submachine guns, the shotguns. But by far my favourite is either the assault rifle, the Scar L, or the Type 95. The Scar L, I've already got it to like weapon level 29 I think it is and the scar just rapes face it's got little to no recall it seems to fit my playing style um, the Titan I-5 is really good as well and acts a lot like the Famas from Modern Warfare 2 and I reckon that's the gun you're gonna see appear a lot in this game as it goes on because it, it's like a one-shot burst or two-shot burst um, it's just a very powerful weapon with quite a fair amount of ammo and um, some people are going to say it's going to be an overpowered gun and complain, blah blah blah. But I, I wouldn't think so because there are guns better than others in this game. This, it's, I don't think, if I'm being honest, it's as well balanced as maybe Black Ops per se. And I know how Black Ops had like really stupid guns, like the um, the Uzi, for example, was pretty much useless and um, stuff like that. And the China Lake was retarded. But there's no like standout guns for me. In this game, um, like the UMP or the AK-74U, and I, I do think this is kind of um, a bit of a step down, really, in the balance department. Um, but another gun that seems really underpowered for me was the M16, which was really surprising because the M16 was like king um, in Call of Duty 4. It was like the main gun that people use for MLG and the MP5, and the MP5 is toned down a bit as well. Um, the MP5 is not bad, it's, it's pretty good, and the M16 is okay, in my opinion, but um, it's just really weird to see the guns that stood out a lot, even the M4, like I feel, was turned down a lot, and they've kind of put more emphasis in the new guns, per se. Um, so yeah, and the shotguns aren't that great either, I do like how there's more shotguns though, um, better in terms of variety and just interesting guns, but um, if you think the Spaz, if you think the Spaz is returned to its former glory from Modern Warfare 2, you are dead wrong because the Spaz in this game is god awful. Um, just in my opinion, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the Spaz is terrible in this game. I did give um, some other shotguns a go, like the I think it's the KSG or something like that, which is like the pump shotgun, and it really annoys me because. I've been wanting a really good pump action shotgun in a Call of Duty game since World at War because I love the trench gun so much in that game. It's like one of my favourite guns to use, and I just have, there just hasn't been like a pump, a, like a pump action shotgun since that. And you know, it's it's it's, it's kind of gay, but um, if you're going to choose like a shotgun, uh, probably the USAS. I think that's right. Um, is the way to go because that's a pretty good shotgun. Um, but assault rifles, I really like the Scar L. Um, Type 95, people could probably think it's overpowered. I don't think so, but I still think it's a good gun, nevertheless. Uh, the LMGs... It's, it's, it's quite funny, because like, in every COD game, it seems like the LMGs are the class of guns that nobody really cares about. Yeah, they've got loads of ammo and stuff like that, but they make you walk slow or run slow, and they take ages to reload, and they don't seem to have much damage. It's just like a slugfest, really. But um, the LMGs seem okay. Um... I only tried two of them, and I think the one I like quite a bit is the PKM. I can't pronounce the word next to it, but it's, it's, it's the PKM. It's alright. Uh, the sniper rifles are back in this game. Um, I think if you put the perks sleight of hand, and I think it's quick draw. Yeah, I think it's quick draw, yeah. Um, you can bring back the snipers basically to what they were in Modern Warfare 2, where they were really good for quick scoping and stuff. And um, I'm not really a sniping player, I'm more of a submachine gun, shotgun, or assault rifle guy. Um, but I think the snipers seem okay. Um, I had to go at the first two, and I think the sniper that stood out to me was the um, the L. 
what's it called? L9 AA1 or something like that, which works a lot similar to the L96 from Black Ops, but um, if you're trying to use an ACOG on the snipers, I wouldn't bother because it's terrible, basically. Um, and some machine guns. Some machine guns are actually probably my favourite class overall in every game. Like, if I think about it, in COD 4, I would use the MP5 with a silencer like all the time. Um, in World at War, I did like the assault rifles and snipers a lot, but I just found so, so much fun using the Thompson with a round drum, or, well, I know the MP40 was really overpowered, but I still enjoy that gun for what it is. Um, and in Modern Warfare 2, I really enjoyed using I think, the Vector. Yeah, I really enjoyed using the Vector in that game. And in this game, some machine guns just just not that great, and it's 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 like, oh, <laughs> it's just disappointing, but... Um, I'd say probably the best submachine gun in the game is probably the P90. Um, some might disagree, but I think a lot of people will agree. Um, because the P90 has such a massive clip and um, crazy amount of um, a crazy rate of fire, it's just an overall really good gun. I don't know how I killed that guy there, but anyway, um, with a pistol. Oh yeah, and speaking of pistols, there's no M9 in this. M9 is like my favourite gun of all time. It's not in this game. Um, but oh well, it's only an M9 anyway, even though it is my favourite gun. But yeah, uh, they brought back the Desert Eagle. Um, they got revolvers in this game as well. And uh, they're not bad either. There's loads of launchers in this game. But thankfully, um, the new tubes or the grenade launchers, um, they're not that powerful or great either. But uh, overall, if I was to just kind of summarise the list of guns and what kind of stuff, it's, it's pretty good. Um, there's a nice variety in the guns and stuff, there's some old favourites and stuff like that, like the AK-47. I just wish that some of those old favourites were unlocked more at the start, but then again I guess you do get like the MP5 and the M4 and stuff at the start anyway. Um, attachments? Uh, there's nothing really new really, apart from that kind of dual scope thing. Uh, the first scope is good for longer ranges and the second one for more medium short range. But every time you respawn, it gives you the bloody longer one and it pisses me off because you have to keep switching every time you spawn and that puts me off guard, really. Um, thankfully, you can switch it whilst you're running, but it's, it's still really annoying. The proficiencies are pr probably the coolest addition to multiplayer, really. Um, it just makes the perks more open and more balanced, really. But then again, a lot of the perks in this game just don't seem that interesting, really. But I guess, like, um... You can mix it up a lot more now. There's no like juggernaut or stopping power. Um, what they've done with the damage in this game is that um, in Black Ops they took uh, they took juggernaut and stopping power out, but um, they made so that made the game slower pace because it took more bullets to kill. In this game, um, they pretty much kept it like Modern Warfare 2, but without stopping power, and it's still pretty darn fast <laughs> if I'm honest. So they've really bumped up the damage of the guns and stuff like that. So having the proficiencies is pretty cool because it opens up more possibilities and stuff. But in terms of perks, um, I mostly run with uh, assassin or quick draw simply because I just like aiming fast and I don't like being detected by the loads, absolute loads of UAVs out there. Um, and speaking of UAVs, the kill streaks are quite cool as well. Some people are saying they're quite boring in the selection stuff, and I would agree in a way actually. Um, but it's weird because, so you've got three different types, you've got your salt where um, if you die you got to start from the beginning again. You've got your support, so if you get four kills, you die, then you'll be on your fourth uh, support kill streak or point streak or whatever. So if you get another kill, you'll be on your fifth one, which is really cool, I just use the support ones really. But then you've got the specialists, and the specialists are the ones that um, I've been tinkering with. So, uh, two kills will get you one perk of your choice, four will get you another one, six will get you another one. Um, and if you get seven kills or six kills if you're using hardline, uh, you will unlock all the perks, and it really does feel like you're jacked. Like your everything just changes. You'll start running fast, um, and for longer distances, you'll be able to aim down sights really quick. You'll be able to move quicker. Um, it's just you just feel like a beast, basically, like a beast. And uh, that was a retarded noise or voice. Anyway, um, so the specialist is pretty good. I've mostly used the support, but it's really weird how. Like the UAV is at four, and then you got five. Um, it's like the counter, and then it's a massive gap. Like the next set of kill streaks is like eight. But um, if you see there, there's a Sam turret, and Sam turrets are probably my favourite kill streak in the whole game. Actually, they they work so well in this game, and I'm so glad they actually take out air support and stuff like that. And um, speaking of air support as well, 
the attack helicopters are really powerful now. Um, which were well, the standard ones, which is really strange, really, and put me off guard. But you get used to it. And I'm surprised by the amount of people that um, fall for those fake care packages. And it's it's really weird how you hear the beeping, and everyone can hear it. And it's like beep 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 boom, and then they die. Uh, but yeah, kill streaks and strike packages, or whatever they're called, they're all quite good. And Juggernaut isn't as strong as I thought it would be, as you're targeted not on the map, I think. But yeah, map-wise. Um, Arkadent, as you can see here, is probably my favourite map in the game. Um, it seems to be a map I consistently play well on, but um, if I was talking about the maps as a whole, they're just, they're so weird, because um, if you think about Terminal, if you think about uh, Crash or something like that, all these maps kind of have a focus point or a power point where most of the gunfights take place, but in this game, a lot of the layouts of this map are confusing, and I find myself getting shot in the back a lot more, um, which can be frustrating, but... I think the look and the variety of the maps is pretty cool. There's only like one snow map, and um, that's nice because I'm sick of so snow maps to be honest. Um, but the maps, I don't know, they're, they're taking a while to get used to because um, I was hoping the sizes of the maps would be smaller, but I guess because of how um, the way the game has changed, in that like it's not more about close quarters, it's more about like medium range now, they kind of make the maps a bit bigger now. And uh, I quite like it, really. I, I like it. I like the maps, actually. It's just the layouts are really weird to get used to. Um, and what else can I really say about the multiplayer? I mean, camos just not that great, really. Red and blue aren't like they used to be. Uh, the removal of the custom emblem thing is disappointing to me because it was really nice to see, or really funny and creative to see what people could do. But anyway, um, Modern Warfare Freeze multiplayer. Uh, I was playing it for a few hours. I would give it a thumbs up. Um, it's still a pretty good experience. I do get frustrated from time to time, but overall it, it's still fun with friends. And here I get the final kill with the score out with the red dot in the uh, silent suit. Take two of them out with the double kill, and I randomly explode there. And I don't know how. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this commentary. And if you liked it, like it and uh, subscribe for more Warning for free. 43 kills, 17 deaths. Uh, not the greatest score in the world, but I felt I did well. So yeah, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.